Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Stall TV session all about heat printing and profiting with billboard crews. This is one of the most profitable garments that you can be decorating right now in your business, and we're going to teach you exactly how. We have a very exciting Stall TV session today, and I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stall TV. I'll be your presenter, and I'd like to introduce some folks that will be helping us out. So we have Taylor um, that will help us catch some of the video angles. Come on in, Taylor, and take a wave to our audience. And then we also have Chad, who will be helping to manage the chat. So if you have uh, any questions, just chat them on in there uh, to Chad. We'll stop at various points throughout the presentation and make sure we answer those questions. And he'll do his best to keep up um, and answer those questions uh, via chat throughout the session. So you are operating through the GoToWebinar. You should be seeing me live on camera. You should also, in the right dashboard, have a questions box within the webinar panel. That's where you chat in the questions to us so we can make sure we answer them. So. Let's start with the very basics about the billboard crew that we're going to be decorating today. Uh, number one is this style of garment. This oversized garment is something that's extremely popular right now in the market. There is a number of blank apparel providers that are selling this garment. And it's very popular in resort towns, on college campuses, um, for Greek apparel. And it's starting to translate down into other markets for the local decorator now that you can get the garments in blanks. So tons of opportunities like bridal parties, uh, schools, dance teams, you name it, there's just a ton of opportunity that you can reach with this style of, of garment. And so we want to thank Pennant Sportswear for donating the garments today. We've kind of partnered with them on this program. And uh, good news for all of you, they uh, have chosen to extend a discount to all of our viewers today. So if you stay till the end of the session, we'll extend a discount code to you where you can go to the Pennant Sportswear site and purchase these blanks for a bit of a discount. Um, so let's start with the basics and some of the challenges of the billboard crew. Um, I'm going to switch over to a uh, camera angle here, and let's go through why these garments are so challenging. So Taylor will come on in and, and take a look at this. So the, the real popular design trend with these garments, if I flip it over to the back here, is that people that are wearing these and how they're being merchandised we want to decorate clear across the entire back panel. So naturally, um, this back panel size changes depending on whether it's a extra large shirt, like I have here, or if it's an extra small or a youth large shirt, like I have here. So basically, if you were to think about screen printing this, you would have to um, burn a design size and a screen uh, for each particular panel, each size of garment, because there's some uh, variability in the, the size of designs. And for that reason, we really like heat printing in the cap cut process of cutting graphics on a vinyl cutter, where we can literally cut as little as one graphic for customization of this, and we can size graphics on demand. So we can send to this neon pink material in our vinyl cutter and cut graphics for two extra large shirts, one small shirt, one youth medium shirt, it's just really cost effective to do. And we'll teach you how to create these graphics. But I want to start with the basics, which, which is once you prepare a heat transfer, how do you heat press it? So as I'm getting ready to heat press, and Taylor will kind of follow me over to the press, I'd like to launch one of our poll questions, if we could, Chad, and ask how many people have actually uh, decorated one of these styles of shirts before. We'll give him a chance to launch that and answer while we're waiting. So if you can take a moment to answer yes or no on whether or not you've decorated these. I'll give you a couple more seconds and we'll uh, close the poll out once about 70 plus percent have answered. If you can share the results with me. 19% yes, 81% no. 81% no. So plenty of a learning curve and for that is 19%. We hope to show you something new today. So we'll close that poll out and we're going to launch uh, the second poll because I just want to see who owns vinyl cutters and heat presses out of our listening audience today. So you should see that poll start to come up here in one second. These um, sessions are getting so popular, we're having to train uh, more of our um, stalls crew to help facilitate and manage these. So this is Chad's first time, so we thank you for bearing with us and sending him some good luck today. All right, and once we get over 70%, let's close that down and um, figure out who owns 
cutters and heat presses? 93% yes, 7% no. Okay, and what was the poll question we launched? I just want to make sure we get the right one there. It was how have you installed Stalls TV class. That's okay. That's good to know too. Launch the last poll question because I want to see who has um, cutters and presses. And we're going to give you a little bit more time on the cutter and press question because really we want to see do you own just a heat press, do you own just a cutter, do you own neither, or do you own both? Alright, a couple more seconds on that. Let me read through the options. Hopefully we have some vinyl cutter owners today and we'll close it out and share the results here. Okay, great. So 100% of our audience has a heat press, which is awesome. And then 94% also have a vinyl cutter. All right, let's come on in over at the heat press again, Taylor. Okay, so we have a variety of heat presses we're going to be using today, and I'll explain the difference between both. Um, this is our Hotronics Auto Open Clam Heat Press. So naturally, it's a clamshell style press. It'll count down to zero, and once it's completed the application, it will automatically open for you. You'll notice something about this press. I have it on the caddy stand, which basically if you have this style of press, you can purchase a heat press caddy for $299. You can drop the press down into the caddy and make it threadable, which means it's completely open underneath. This is a really critical thing about decorating these garments efficiently and accurately is having a press that's threadable. One of the biggest challenges, if you were to just lay the shirt on top of here, and try to print a graphic across is you actually have this collar that's going to want to print through um, to the actual graphic on the other side. So if you can see that, there's the front collar would want to print through the back and you get a marking on your shirt and maybe a marking in your lettering. So we've taught people to use heat printing pillows inside of there to help alleviate that, but really the, mo the easiest way to print any sort of volume of these is to thread it. So we actually split the garment open. We're going to thread it onto the press and it stalls, uh, we always recommend that you preheat that garment to get a nice printing surface, void of moisture and wrinkles. So we're printing across this whole panel, so I'm just going to slide the garment over to the side. I'm going to preheat, preheat half of the garment for a second, doing my pressure adjustment at this time as well. So we'll preheat that just for a couple seconds on that side. And I'm going to slide the garment to the other side. preheat the other side. Some people skip the preheat process. If that's a risk you want to take, go for it, but we we'll recommend it. Okay, after that, I'm going to center the garment on the press. Basically getting the tag in the center, and I want the collar of the shirt hanging just over the edge, and now I'm ready to align my graphic. We've cut this graphic and weeded it, which we'll show you in a moment, but one key point to heat printing these is finding the center point of the graphic. So I'm folding the graphic kind of edge to edge um, on this back side here. And then I'm just going to flatten a crease down on the top and the bottom of the graphic, which is a centering helper for me. Now that will allow me to kind of position the design and center it on the tag. Now we have design sizes set up to make it easy to um, cut and make sure it fits the panel, but basically flatten it out. And then I'm going to carefully drag the shirt over I'm going to have to break this up into two steps. So I'm going to press the left side first. Make sure to grab my cover sheet here. Cover sheet's always just a good idea. You don't necessarily have to have it, but it helps in case anything's accidentally exposed to the heater. I'm going to give this side about 12 seconds. The press will automatically open. And then I'm going to delicately slide the garment over to the other half, really paying attention to a couple things. I want to make sure that the full edge of the graphic is getting pressure and not too close to the very edge of the press. So there's enough there. There's about a quarter inch distance where it's still getting firm pressure. I'm not really worried if this side presses again, but I want to make sure the whole side gets pressed. So I can see kind of my center line where it left off. I want to press this whole half. If I'm able to, it's nice to get any raised areas like this collar off of the edge of the press. Sometimes it's just not possible, but if you're able to kind of drape that off the edge, um, you'll get a much better 
application on areas that are close to the collar. So, line this up and lock it down for the full application. The heat transfer film I'm using here could be any heat transfer film because we're working with a cotton-based garment or a cotton poly blend across all these shirts. I'm using Sport Film Light. The reason I like Sport Film Light is because it comes 20 inches wide, which means I can nest these graphics up really nicely across the material when I'm cutting it and not have a lot of waste in the process. Also, Sport Film Light has a very low tack backing, which really helps things out when weeding larger graphics and designs. So I'm going to spin the shirt on the press and print the front while the back's cooling down. Sport Film Light is a warm to a cool peel, so I'm going to give it some time to cool down. Then I'm going to just drape, once again, center it up, and drape the collar off of the edge. Preheat. And then grab my left chest graphics. So there's a couple different placement areas on this. Um, left chest, obviously, is one of the most popular placements for the front of these shirts, especially because they have the seam running down the sort of middle of the body, which doesn't allow much of a full front graphic. I've also seen uh, companies merchandising them with more of a design down the left side. You can get creative with placement, but decorating the front will generate a higher profit piece for you. So in this case, we're going to do a left chest. Yeah, make sure I have it lined up correctly. Something to look out for, make sure you're coming off of the center of your garment for your left chest. It's easy to get confused. You don't want to put the graphic between the armpit and the center of the garment. You'd be way over here, and it's going to run off of the garment underneath the armpit when it's being worn. These fit very loose. So you want to take a line from the center, come over about four inches to center your graphic on the left chest. And we have laser alignment tools that you can set up alongside your press. So you hit this placement every time, but I'm pretty familiar with heat press, so I'm able to just place it in the proper position and give it the full application. As that's locking down and we're going to wait for it to cool down, is there any questions coming in, Chad, that uh, you think you need directed at me? Yeah, so you can um, switch back to the camera angle for now, Taylor, while we move this garment over and hit some questions. So, um, Billboard Crew is specific to pennant sportswear, but obviously there's a lot of different company uh, companies that sell this particular garment. So some different sources for it are Boxercraft, carries one called the Pom Pom Jersey. Um, I wouldn't say that's the most cost effective, but it's certainly a viable option. Um, there is uh, J America offers a version. Neon Tees offers a style. Um, those are the ones that are popping up off the top of my head. I personally prefer um, the pennant sportswear garment uh, for something I'm going to show you a little bit la later. It's a little bit heavier weight and it adds a, an additional area on the sleeve for personalization. So although it may cost you a dollar more than the next brand or a dollar less, it's all about the areas that you can personalize and make money on. So these are all about profit potential. So I should be able to peel this and switch back so we can get the peel here. Okay, so this is cooled down. I'll peel it off the back. Sport Film Light is a polyurethane-based material, which means it's CPS I compliant. It's safe for kids apparel. Uh, you don't have to worry about who's buying this garment. It's safe to sell it to them. You get something that's relatively um, a soft feel. Um, not a lot of stretch, a little bit of stretch, but it feels nice on this garment ultimately, and it comes in a nice color range. Also, um, this side should be cooled down a bit. Peel that off. It's, a, it's our economy material. We kind of put it in our economy bucket because it's very cost effective per square inch. And I love that it's 20 inches for this process. It's a great product um, for these particular garments. A little bit different than fashion film. Fashion film would be great for a design like this. You could use fashion film on a large design, but the backing on fashion film is really sticky, so it's a little harder to weed those large areas. So let's talk a little bit about what this um, costs to produce, and then I'm going to come back to some more of your questions. So if we can switch over to my computer screen. And, um, I'm on the stallstv.com site, so if you haven't registered for that, it's live now. There's a bunch of on-demand videos. First, sign up for that. But let me talk a little bit about what this costs to make. 
we have something that's called the cost calculator now that comes um, that's available to you. All you need to do is uh, note right now in the feedback that you're interested in the cost calculator, and I'll email this out to you after the session. Um, but you start with the business info tab, where you can basically type in your average cost per yard for the different materials that we manufacture and sell. You can also type in the roll width that you purchase from us. Then you start to enter in, in step two, some really key information. You enter the shop's overhead percentage, the hourly rate you pay to the heat press person and your weeding person, your average weeding time per layer, meaning how long does it take you to weed an oversized print in this case, so maybe it takes you three minutes, which is what we've typed here, and the average time to heat press. So if I wasn't talking, I could probably heat press that garment in about two minutes uh, for the two steps on the back and the left chest graphic. So all of this gets entered as business info. Yes, you can change it or you can save it. And then you go to the actual cost calculator tab. So um, before I go into the cost calculator tab, I just want to show you one more thing on stallstv.com. If, if I went through that kind of fast, no worries. Go to the broadcast archive on stallstv.com. There is an hour and 36 minute session here that's calculating costs and selling prices that you can watch that will walk you step by step through calcul calculating costs and selling prices for the CAD cut process. Okay, so now let's enter the details for our job. We entered our business info on the tab one and here's the details for the job. I'm going to punch in the specifics for um, the one I just cut and let's just say that was out of a glitter material. So there are um, See, there are two cut designs per garment, right? There's my back design and then my left chest design. The design dimensions for my back design were approximately uh, 26 inches wide for this extra large shirt by 9 inches. My left chest design was approximately 4 by 4 inches. Entering my cost of the blank garment, which is $14.95. And let's just say I'm doing this for uh, Malibu, California, for the Rip Curl Surf Shop, which was the left chest graphic. And maybe there's 12 employees on hand that want this particular garment. Or it could be for a promotional thing where there's a higher quantity. But let's start with 12. At that point, it's going to kick out all of your heat transfer material costs, your labor costs, your weeding costs, for every part of the process. And ultimately, it's going to tell you your cost per piece for all the materials that you've populated. So as I can see, with pretty much any material that I'd use, this is going to cost me with overhead, labor, everything, under $24 a piece, even in a glitter material. It's not that much of a difference from a basic material. Now the question is, how much can you sell this for? So for the, I don't want you to take my word for it. For those of you that are selling these garments, if you could type into Chad um, what you're selling these for right now, that would be beneficial. So what's the market price on a 12-piece order for something like this? Let me know if you get any feedback. $39. Okay, so I have $39. Okay, so most people are actually selling these for anywhere between $49 and $59, um, depending on the finish. So $39 is a very um, lucrative price, actually. So let's just say you wanted to do $39, which I think is on a little bit low side, unless it's, you know, unless somebody else is making margin on it, like a store or something like that, or a fundraising program. Uh, we'll put in 39 just to be conservative, and you can see the profit per piece for this garment decorated is anywhere between $15 and $17. That's after you pay the labor for weeding and heat application, so pretty profitable. If you can push that price up, maybe to something like $49, now all of a sudden we're hitting profit per piece $25 plus. So on a 12-piece order, we know we're making job profit on 12 pieces of around $300. That's exceptional margin. I'd much rather be merchandising and asking my sales folks to spend time selling this garment because of the profit per piece that I'm going to deliver back to my business instead of something like a basic t-shirt, which is very competitive and maybe only 5 or $6 profit per piece. So that is why this garment is so popular. It may seem expensive for the cost of the blank, but the market price right now is extremely high. So if you're charging cheap prices, I'd encourage you to raise them. Let's keep the market price high so we can all make money on this particular style. So that's just a, a quick little tutorial of that. If you can switch me back to the live cam, I'm going to take a couple more questions. Okay. What questions do we have? Two questions, Josh. Um, do, does pennant have bigger ones than extra large? 
Um, that is a good question. So let me just check my computer real quick. I actually have the pennant site up, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, yes, it goes up through 2XL. And the second question I have for you, since you uh, changed the way you apply the transfer, what was the reason you did that? Okay, yeah, so that's a good point. So we did an early tutorial where we actually put a heat printing pillow inside of the press and just laid the garment on top. While it seemed to be pretty fast, it still wasn't, it still wasn't as consistent and as effective as threading the garment. Um, so I got a lot more experience with printing these actual garments myself um, and doing glitter and a range of different materials on them at trade shows and different events. And when you can thread it, I much prefer the threadability factor of it. So you don't get print through of that collar. I just didn't, it was a little quality issue. Um, still durable, still an option to do it with putting a pillow in there and just laying it down. But you got a little print through from that collar coming through the back discoloration. Any more questions right now? Okay. So let's come back to um, another application. Let's see, we got so many great samples that Beth helped us out with. And let's talk, well, let's show you a smaller size because it's a little bit different. So this is a youth large. The particular material um, that's cut is still sport film light. And we just cut a Falcon softball and then a little baseball with a number drop in it, just showing you that with CAD cut you can do personalization as well. And so let's show you some of the challenges when you go to load this onto the press. Um, I'm going to use the Fusion on this one, Taylor. I just want to show a different option. So the Hotronics Fusion is another heat press. I prefer this heat press over the other one uh, myself um, because it's a little uh, easier for layout. It's heat-free workspace. You can do pre-programmed settings. And also there's a narrower throat underneath for threading stuff on, like sleeve placements, which we'll show you in a bit. But if we were to thread this on, it's very difficult to maneuver this garment to get to some of these print locations on this large 16 by 20 plan. So both of these presses that we've been showing today feature something called interchangeable platens, where you click out this button, that gold knob, you lift your attachment out, it's just a pin registration system. And one of the awesome things about this press, it's so quick and easy, I call it the lightning latch, it's so quick to change your attachment. Drop in the 11 by 15, make sure it's locked into place so it's not going to come off of there. And now it gives me a much nicer width to kind of rotate that garment around very easy without having to worry about um, it being warped or anything. So let me show you. I'll just load this on. Anytime you do a platen change out, or change anything, you just want to make sure you have the pressure dialed in. So I'll just adjust this back until I get that sort of medium pressure. For speed purposes, I won't preheat. If you ever notice discoloration like we see here on the shirt when you add heat to it, that's pretty common for any orange and red and sort of burgundy pink colorways. Um, don't worry about that. It'll come right out. So I folded that graphic in half. I'm going to position it down into place. Rotate it around. Now I'm working with a design width that's about 22 inches wide. Once again, you should use a cover sheet, but I just want to show you that you don't necessarily have to if you know uh, what you're doing. You know there's nothing that's going to get up on the heater. Seconds. Slide that garment to the side where I can hang off the collar. Make sure everything's flat so I'm not getting any pinching underneath the garment. And give that side 12 seconds. Same thing where I can print and spin. necessarily do your left chest placement all the way down at the seam. That'll be a little bit low on the garment. So I think you want it seven inches down from the top collar. If you pinch the top shoulder collar and look at the outside of the collar, 
the center of your left chest should actually track down about seven inches down right to the center of the graphic. So you notice how my graphic is centered when I pinch right on the outside of the collar. And of course that will change based on the cut. I don't know if you think that's a, a dead hard rule because if you're decorating a regular t-shirt that's a scoop neck or a v-neck or a boat cut, whatever it might be, that might change slightly. But for a crew neck t-shirt, that's pretty consistent. Okay, keep it here. Simplicity. Peel that off. down enough. Oh, nope, wasn't cooled down enough. So if you ever accidentally start to lift something, no reason to panic. I just lifted it a bit at the edges, so I'm just going to lock it down for another application. Heat, heating and reheating does not hurt this stuff. Um, what hurts it is when you start to compromise the adhesive by lifting it, and then um, don't hit it again. Then you run the risk of durability concerns. So I'll hit this again. We'll let it cool down um, while I press the next garment. So you can just Hang right there, Taylor. I want to point out one other thing. When you start to work with these types of garments, I always recommend if you want to push that price up, move to something like glitter. And also, you need to reduce your cost down. So reduce the number of square inches that you waste when you're cutting these graphics. It's very easy when you're arching text, placing something underneath to have these sort of void areas of your design that if you just weed it, go away, get in the garbage is waste. So what we recommend you do is you sell additional placements, like the left chest graphic, which we have the LA or the HANA here as a left chest graphic, whatever way we want. And then also there's another sort of, sort of void area. And what's a great application for that area is a sleeve graphic. So try to sell personalization, push that price up for garment. And the great thing about this pennant sportswear shirt it has a little personalization area right on the sleeve. Okay, so it's cut out, it's specific for that, and, you're, and you might say, how do I print that? Well, with technology like the Fusion, it's easy. We click and change this platen out. You might already know, we have a sleeve and leg attachment. Drops right into place here. It's long, it's slender, it's easy to load. Um, there is a personalization area on both sleeves, so I can simply pick the side that I want to decorate right through the collar, okay, the neck of the shirt. I'm going to split it open, and I'm going to load that sleeve up onto the press. Now, this is great for long pant legs and yoga pants and things like that, but it's also great for this little sleeve placement. So I'll preheat this to get that wrinkle out. Adjusting my pressure based on the new platen I loaded. Now I'm able to do a name drop right on the sleeve. So now I'll take that $39, a $49 garment. If you want to add a name to it, it's an additional five bucks. But get what, guess what the great part is? I didn't add any additional material cost because I fit it within the context of the back design. So the only thing I added is a little bit of labor cost for change out of the platen, for weeding the sleeve graphic, and for pressing it. What questions do we have, Jeff? Oh, that is a good question. I don't know the particular arch um, degree that I set up within CADWorks, but we will take a look at it. You're welcome to edit that, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment in the design software. Uh, but it's, it's certainly open as long as it fits within that panel size. All right, so that's the sleeve placement. I'll finish decorating this, and you've seen this before, so you can continue to watch. And Chad, you can fire me questions as they come in as I'm printing here. Good right now? So glitter flake heat transfer materials continues to take off in sales. I think it's uh, the next big thing for these types of garments. We have even more big things planned that will be coming soon, but can't talk about them at the moment, but um, make sure you stay tuned in to Stalls TV because we have some new exciting 
uh, transfer types for these types of garments coming soon. So the point of this was to show you a different market. Dance schools are great for this. If you already sell it at dance schools, why not decorate a free one as a Christmas present? for the owner of the dance school or the lead dance instructor, and then ask if they want to run a fundraising sale. This is a great place where they can price this at $59 a shirt. You can sell them to them at $49, and you can deliver $10 in profit back to the dance school as a fundraiser. But they have to see it to want to buy it, especially when you're talking about glitter materials. Uh, when customers see glitter, they buy it. It's not the same just to see a virtual sample of it. So make an actual sample for the dance teacher. Consider it marketing expense. Okay. Glitter can be peeled hot or cold. So as soon as that comes up, you can start to peel the side all the way down to what's been printed. And once again, uh, it's very cost effective to do this. I'm going to switch back um, to the computer angle is where I'm trying to go. So if you can move me back over to the computer chat. What you're seeing right now on screen is we're at pennantsportswear.com. Um, you can see there's a wide variety of colors in this particular garment. It's 100% cotton. It's heavyweight. Um, they call them two personal platforms on the sleeves, um, available in use sizes under a different item number. So um, I want to take a moment to give you that code now while we're waiting. So if you can uh, chat this out to the audience chat. It is S as in Sam, T as in Tom, H as in Henry, 1214. So if you, that's exclusive to people that are on this live broadcast only. Um, if you use that um, prior to the end of the week, prior to end of day tomorrow, you will be able to get um, a dollar off per billboard crew. So it's just a nice way for you to try it and get started. All right, so now let's go into design and how to set these up within CADWorks Live. So thanks for those who attended the CADWorks Live training earlier today, but uh, for those that didn't, CADWorksLive.com is a free design software intended specifically for vinyl cutting primarily, but there are other applications as well. You can sign up for free at cadworkslive.com. If you're a Stalls customer, you can enjoy ongoing access. What I would recommend doing is launching the Design Studio, which after you log in, you can launch the Design Studio. And you can start with a blank screen. There are already pre-designed templates set up that you can use. So you click on the templates. If you scroll down in the templates folder, you'll see jumbo prints. And then we, we've set up four basic layouts for you. These are designs that I set up that I felt were some of the most popular ones. Keep in mind, you can adapt these designs, come up with your own layouts within CADWorks, and save them under your own templates or layouts. If there's another option you want to add as a stock option, that's great. So I'm going to pick just a, I don't know, let's do a, Capsule design sounds good. I'll open that up. It's another popular style of this. And so you can see it defaults with the text drop. It already has a default arch. If you want to edit this text, you just double click it. And if I were selling this to a Greek organization, I can do the name there. It will automatically update. Um, at that point, you can also do a font change. There are a ton of fonts already within CADWorks, including all the popular Stalls fonts that you can change this to. As you can see, I have the text field selected, so it's changing all the attributes of the text. If I want to change the character spacing, I can do that with the plus and minus command. If I want to change the attributes of the arch, which addresses the question from earlier, I can do that. So I can change the specific height and the width of the arch. So if I'd like to see a little more of an arch than what I have for this particular layout, I'll take that 2-inch arch 
up to a three inch. And you can see it starts to adjust it and give it a little more of an arch. I can take it up to four inch. Um, I can change the width of the arch. All of that edits that specific uh, details. It defaults at a two inch, which I think is pretty common. But you can make all those changes. Um, once you're happy with that text, click OK. And then you can cancel out of the font menu. And then you can start to change the name drop underneath it. So maybe this is for a big sister or something like that. I can double click this, change it to big sister, do my font change. Uh, it's tough to see because it's white, but when you click OK, you can see it drops right within the capsule. Of course, if you do something really long or really small, you can size the capsule size right within uh, AdWorks Live. That's not a problem. Um, once you have everything laid out and created, what you want to do is select everything by drawing a box around it and go to size to fit. This is very important because right now you see this is 31 and a half inches wide. If I were to cut this for a uh, garment, let's just say that was a size small, that would never fit on that panel. You'd be going over the seams. So what I can do is click on size to fit. And the beautiful thing is we've already set up presets in here for these billboard crews. So I can go to a standard jumbo print, which fits everything from medium to XL at 26 inches wide. Or I can go to a small jumbo print, which fits small, extra small, and smaller. So I want to go with the small jumbo print, which is 22 inches wide. Select that and watch. It sizes the whole thing down to 22 inches wide by no more than the proportional height of, I believe it was 9 inches. So this one happened to be based on the layout 22 by 6 and a half. At that point, I can do a couple things. If you're one of those 94% of people that have a vinyl cutter, I can load my material of choice and send it over to the cutter. If you don't have a vinyl cutter, you can export this in a PDF format, which is a vector format. Send it to um, Stalls or another company uh, to actually cut the designs for you. But I want to show you how you can uh, lay this out in vector cut to be very uh, cost effective on your material utilization. So VectorCut is just another portion of CADWorks that's available for free download. Um, CADWorksLive.com is an online designer, but once you get ready to send to the cutter, you need to download it to VectorCut or bring it over as that vector PDF and bring it into your local cut driver. So I know that's a mouthful, but there's also CADWorks training um, under this broadcast archive. If you click on well, it's not there, but we'll make sure we add making CADWorks Live work for you. It'll walk you through all the tutorials on CADWorks. There is also, under the equipment and software training, a whole CADWorks Live session with smaller tutorials under stallstv.com. But anyways, we have this design. Let's send it over to VectorCut. Click OK. It'll download it since it's working within Google Chrome right to the bottom toolbar. And I'll be able to kind of fly this open, zoom into where we can see something. And then I can make all of my changes. I can mirror it if I'm cutting it out of heat transfer film. Let's say I'm cutting it out of uh, glitter material. I have a 20 inch wide glitter material loaded into the cutter. So there's about 19 and a half inches of cuttable width when I'm using the graph tech. I can type in my width and then I can make copies of it. So I can rotate it and then let's just say I want to do three copies. I can make the copies right within CADWorks. Now you're noticing something. Um, I'm able to fit two up on this design, but not three up. So maybe I want to make a design alteration to try to fit three up, because fitting three across is really going to drive down my cost instead of having all this waste. So I can try to fit this here and see just how close I was, see if I'm going to be able to do anything. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do anything with this um, to fit three up, so I may just have to absorb that cost into my price or try to upsell a customer to four garments. And you can always get crazy and try to cut this piece out and make it a little tighter and then trim it later. Um, you just have to see if it's worth your time to do that versus the wasted material. So let me just try to trim those up, make them a little tighter, and then move everything over together. Might make it. Good. Awesome. Yeah. So then I click Auto Origin, and now you can see I was able to fit three up. So in the heat press phase, um, I can either just trim these apart to give it a little more spacing, or I can come back to um, CADWorks and say, hey, if this was just a little tighter, I don't think the customer will notice that in the design. I'd be 
be able to fit three up and really reduce my cost of material. Cost of material in the heat transfer film process is absolutely everything. Um, so at this point, you guys know the process. You would send this over to your vinyl cutter, it would cut the design, you would complete the weeding, and ultimately end up with a transfer ready for heat application. So, for instance, on this particular 19 and a half inch wide material, we're only using 22 inches long. We know a yard of glitter material costs us around $12. Um, I'm using two-thirds of that yard at 22 inches approximately, so it's going to cost me about $8 for three designs. That's material only and waste, not counting labor, but pretty cost-effective when you think about how much you can sell these for. Of course, if this were a two-color design, uh, it would be very easy to break it up by color within CADWorks. There's cut-by-color recognition, which makes things very easy. Sometimes it's more cost-effective to design a two-color design for this process. What I mean by that, um, let me just, uh, I guess let me show you an example. Let me do another design style. I'll delete this one and walk you back through the process. Go to templates. Waiting for my templates to load here. So I guess if there's any questions while I'm doing this, go for it. Correct. Yeah, vector cut does not work on Mac computers, and it's not compatible with some cutters. So what I would recommend is export from CADWorks as a vector PDF or a uh, PLT file and download it to your local cut driver that works with a Mac computer. Whatever you're using right now to send to your cutter, try to import from CADWorks into Yeah, you can absolutely pull a PDF into Illustrator. Okay. Yes, you can pull it into Illustrator and then take it over to your local cut driver. And the last question was, is there an expiration on the code? Um, yeah, so the expiration on the code, actually, I don't know it off the top of my head, so I will make sure it's good through um, end of day tomorrow. I'll confirm that with Penn and Sportswear. So don't sleep on your order. Get it together. Make some samples. Okay, so let me go and show you a two-color uh, layout here. I'll just do something with a... Uh, Clip art and open that up. You guys remember this. You double click on the text. You can change it. Maybe this one's for Connellsville. I'll do a font change to try to show you something different than what we've done. I like the spacing of that font. Do an academic. Of course, I can change all the details about the arch. Arch is pretty standard on these types of uh, layouts. I can do a color change within CADWorks. If Connellsville color is blue. If I don't want this clip art megaphone, all I have to do is delete it, and then I click on Add Clip Art, and I can drop in any clip art I want. So if Connellsville's logo is the bulldog, I can open that up. I can drop it within the context of my design. So it looks good visually. Okay, and let me make it a secondary color. Let's say their colors are blue and red. Now, remember, select everything, size to fit. Let's size this one for a standard size, 26 inches by 9 inch max. Now, when I send it to the cutter, send the vector cut rather. Watch how they. Watch how the nesting gets a lot easier. I mirror it, I rotate it. Now instead of having to send that all and trying to fit a bunch up across a 19 and a half inch wide material, what I can do is I can just select my blue layer and watch how many copies I can do of the blue layer. Let's just start, I'm going to guess it's going to be three or four. Let's start with three. Even with a large design I can fit three copies. Now that spacing is it assumes a box around each design, so you have all this wasted space. I don't mind taking my scissors in the form of an arch as well to save on material. So you can always like just completely nest these down. And I can hit Control Z, Control V to make another copy and just see how many I can make. It looks like I'm going to be pushing my luck at four. There's no way to get that in, but you get the point. Even on a larger design, I can get four on a smaller graphic. I'm sure. I on a larger design, I can get three. On a smaller, I can probably get four. And then I don't have all that waste when I'm making copies of the 
whole dog head and cutting out of the red material, I can fit them up very easily. So breaking apart your design, doing some manual layout, uh, no problem there. So I want to make sure before I leave CAD works that there's no additional questions on this design process. No questions. Okay. So one last tip, just because I feel like it was of interest this morning. If you, you can technically run these designs out to any device. So you can create, if you own a printer cutter, you can create print cut graphics with this, and you can really start to get creative with full color logos or 3D effects. Um, CADWorks has something very cool where I can take this word Connellsville. I can click Add Effect. And then I can add a 3D effect to it. Open it up. It'll take a minute to add that effect because there's a lot happening here. Um, and then click OK. And you can see I get a nice three-dimensional effect if I'm running this out on a printer cutter. I can also add a color gradient to it if I'm running it through a printer cutter, just from changing from a basic fill color to more of a gradient. So now I can take this, I can take my white color, say let's fade from white to, I don't know, that royal blue color. And let's do it in a diagonal instead of a horizontal. Click OK. Click OK. And then you can start to get some really cool effects. I don't necessarily like that one. So I can edit that. I think that was way too much white. So I need to start fading the blue a little quicker. So let me add another drop color of blue into here. Let me just make sure we've selected white and not transparent there. Try that now. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so you can really get creative within CAD works, not only for CAD cut designs for these garments, but for full color uh, print cut designs. And there's the uh, completed result that's ready to print and cut. Um, just want to talk briefly before we switch angles here. Um, about CAD Cut Direct and where you can purchase some of these heat transfer films. So if you go to CADCutDirect.com, you can see some of these materials like Sport Film Light that I'm talking about, Glitter Flake, all of these are products you can use on these garments. Now one product I want to point out that not a lot of people use but I think is underutilized is a product called Fashion Film Electric that I'm navigating here uh, to. It looks like a almost like a metallic foil-like finish if I zoom in on that for you. And I've uh, we've pre-cut a design out of Fashion Film Electric. And I want to show you the application of that now. So let me find the right shirt here. That one's white glitter flake. Now we won't have time to do everything, so I'll point this out as I'm kind of going through it. We'll save these for another day. Here's an example of where you might really charge a high price and do this for a bride or for maybe a bridal party where you can put the name, uh, the date, do a bride name drop on the sleeve or on the left chest. Here's another concept. I'll lay out for you where it's more of a sport graphic where we did volleyball, Laurel Highlands. You can see once again we used the void areas to do a number personalization for teams and then also a name drop. There's all different types of colors and options here. I'm trying to get to my multicolor one. Here we go. Okay, so this one uh, shows a uh, two-color graphic, and it shows Fashion Film Electric, which hopefully I can save here because I've stuck it to itself. Okay, Fashion Film Electric, and then also Glitter Flakes. So we'll go over to um, the Fusion Press once more uh, to heat press this. I think I'll follow my stuff here. Get my designs. Another tip is, you know, you don't want this sticky material floating around your shop. It's great if you can match it to the garment and travel it like that. But also, there is a little pink liner that comes in the box of your CAD cut shipment. Uh, don't throw that away. Save that stuff. You can use it to back your sticky back transfers uh, so you don't have issues. Same sort of thing. Back to back. Create a line. Position it. If 
want the one a two color design, I'm going to add some glitter flake in here. All I'm going to do is tuck it up underneath and press it at the same time. Save some time in the production process. If I want to, if I'm like, how do you center that, and you're worried about centering that, you can also fold this glitter design back to back to get a center line on that and line up the glitter flake center line with the center line of your uh, fashion film electric. That's what I'm trying to do there. Position that into place. Um, press half. Sometimes when you're doing a center drop like that, it might be easier just to do a, a center press first, but in this case, it's completely on the press, so I'm not worried about pressing half. And the great thing is glitter flake and fashion film electric both press at similar temperatures, so I can heat press them together and get great durability. A lot of people want to have foil looks. Um, not everybody wants glitter for every application, and fashion film electric is a highly durable foil. Most foils will crack, peel, um, just not durable. Even the Metallic 2 product we sell and the Hologram product are just not extremely durable. Uh, metallic or foil-like products, but Fashion Film Electric will last 50 wash cycles, so it's a great product to merchandise in your shop. Ultimately, I'll peel it away. I can peel Fashion Film Electric hot. And hopefully you can pick up on that uh, sort of metallic look. I'm not sure how well it will show here. So, heat printing oversized graphics. It's actually quite simple. With the right heat press, a threadable machine, the um, proper uh, design tools with CADWorks Live and sizing designs, and the right pricing program, you can really make a lot of money on these garments. What I would suggest that you do is start to think about different concepts, get this out to your particular area as quickly as possible. This is moving very quick. If you've been ordering these garments, you know that every single supplier that's selling this type of garment has fought back orders at some point in time. That's how popular these are. That's how hot they are right now in the market. When we show this at a trade show, everybody is absolutely all over it. They're wanting to learn how to decorate these. They're wanting to print these right away. And I hear great success stories from customers. Actually, we just sold uh, 300 graphics to one lady uh, for a, a tumbling school or something like that. So. It's, only, it's not onesie twosies, it's not only 12 piece orders. You can literally scale this thing with glitter graphics and different graphics up into orders of the hundreds. You just need to get the garments, you need to decorate some samples, think about your markets, and get them out there. Don't set the price so cheap where you're not going to make money for your time. Ultimately, yes, it'll only take you five minutes at the heat press, three minutes at the heat press per garment, but I'd much rather make $30 for that three minutes instead of $10 by cheapening my price. So keep the price elevated. There's plenty of opportunities. I'd like to stick around and answer any questions. For those of you that have to get back to your day job, thanks for attending another Stalls TV live class. And we'd encourage you to visit stallstv.com, check out the event schedule, and please, please take time to fill out the survey on how you like this session and what you're interested in when you log out. So any more questions? We're good. All right, so we're going to end it. Thank you very much for your time, and good luck in your business and selling these garments.